This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE 2301 statics. This is going to be a truss problem, which I saw for member forces with the method of sections. This is when we just want to pick out a few members and get their member forces and not solve for all of them. So we've got this truss loaded as shown. Um, the dimensions are shown here. We've got these three applied loads. We've got a roller over here at A and a pin at E. And we want to find the member forces in BC, BG, and FG. So part of the analysis is to see where we need to cut a section. Well, this one's obvious. I want BC, BG, and FG, so I cut a section right here. And that's going to be part of my analysis. The basic procedures are shown here in blue. I want to find a cut location, which we just did. Decide on which section to analyze. We're going to, you can analyze either section because everything is in equilibrium. The whole truss is kept in equilibrium by the supports. If you cut a section there, half of one side of the truss is in equilibrium, the other side of the truss is in equilibrium. Every joint is in equilibrium, every member is in equilibrium, the whole thing's in equilibrium. So we're going to analyze the part to the left of that cut because that'll be easier, it has fewer forces to deal with. But we still need to solve for the reactions. We need at least this reaction over here at A. We don't really concern ourselves with the reactions at E, so that simplifies and speeds up the whole process. So we've decided on the section to the left, and we're going to analyze the reactions at A. Sometimes uh, you don't need any of them. Sometimes you need both of them. But we're just going to try to make an efficient, intelligent decision on that. Cut our section, and first part, let's look at the uh, reactions, the reaction at A some in moments about E. So here's the equation. Some of the moments about E is zero. We have these loads, four, two, and six, and their distance is two point E. And then balanced by the support at A and its distance to E, which is 12 feet. Do all the math, we get that AY is a 3.5 kips up, just like we assumed it. So we're going to show that down here on this next free body diagram. Okay, so now we cut our section and we do a free body diagram of the section that we've chosen, which is this part, like I said, to the left. We're going to assume tension in every member that's cut and then equilibrium of the section of the truss means we're going to use some of moments and some of forces to solve for these reactions these member forces. So here's my free body. This is a truss, so member geometry is important to knowing the components of the forces in the member. And I assumed everything in tension with the joint, with the uh, arrow pointing away from the joint. Okay, so the most powerful tool that we have is these sum of moments equations, and we want to try to find a point that has the intersection of two of the member forces and so an obvious one is this member on this point down here G both FBG or F or BG and FG both intersect there so I eliminate those from my moment equation by summing moments about G and only variable I unknown to have is FBC so my equation looks like this. Some of the moments about M, about G is zero. I've got the negative 3.5 causing negative 3.5 means it causes clockwise rotation times its distance to point G. The four kip applied load, its distance FBC is four feet away, and in the direction I've assumed, it's also causing clockwise, so it's negative moment. Rearrange, do the math, I get that FBC is equal to negative 9 fourths or negative 2.25. That means compression in that member. So I really need to erase this arrow here that I've assumed in tension and correct it as pointing to the right 
or to the left I mean. So FBC is compression so it's pointing at the joint. That's important because that may come into play with my next equation or my, this one down here. Next one, I want to find another point that has the intersection of two forces and once again that's B because that eliminates BC and BG and it eliminates this 4 kip force. So I've got negative 3.5 times 3 and FG times 4. Do the math, I get positive 2.625 tension, positive like I assumed. So F, FG is tension 2.625. Finally, I could keep on looking for another, I don't see another point that, because both of these are parallel. So, I'm going to use a sum of forces equation to solve for FBG. I note the member geometry, it's a 3, 4, 5 from the dimensions of the truss. And I've shown that here. And then I've actually shown the components, 3 fifths in the X, 4 fifths in the Y, shown that in blue there. And I do a sum of forces in the Y, positive is up, I got 3.5 up, 4 down, and negative 4 fifths is the Y component of FBG. And I solve for FBG, it is equal to a negative number, negative 0.5 times 5 fourths, gives me a negative 0.625, which means it's also in compression, which means I need to correct its arrow. And I'm really done, but I want to check my answer here because of these trust problems I generally have extra equations that I can deal with. So I've really got compression. So these blue members, these blue components are also reversed. Let me reverse those arrows like that. And like that. Try to erase with that. Oh well, I can remember it because I'm just going to check it with the sum of forces in the x-direction. And here's the numbers. All I have is those two member forces, BC and FG, and then the x component, three-fifths of FBG. And do all the math and that works out to be zero, so it checks.